Macro invertebrates are very important indicators for stream health. However, they are difficult to identify based on morphology. Therefore, we are developing DNA-based methods for species identification. Together with our project partner Christian Meissner from the Finnish Environment Institute, we are now testing our method on real-world samples. He has supplied us with kick samples from 30 sites and all of those samples were used in biomonitoring in Finland as part of the Water Framework Directive. All samples were identified based on morphology and we are now going to extract the DNA and apply our metabarcoding protocols to identify the same samples with DNA barcoding techniques. This way we can compare performance of traditional morphology-based identification versus DNA-based metabarcoding methods. In this video we will show you how we dried and processed the samples for standard DNA salt extraction. The samples were collected in 2013 and were stored in the freezer. Unfortunately, the ethanol content in the tubes was only about 60 to 70 percent and thus sometimes the DNA of the samples were very degraded. However, two thirds of the samples did work well. All surfaces and equipment were cleaned with ethanol before starting the extraction to prevent cross-contamination. The sample ID was checked and also the things written on the tube were protocoled to avoid sample confusion. Each tube contained hundreds of individual specimens those had to be dried before the extraction could start. We dried those on sterile petri dishes on which we also wrote down the ID and the date. Each sample had its own plastic container filled with ethanol. Several kick samples were taken per sample site, which are all in individual glass tubes. However, for DNA extraction, all kick samples collected at a particular site were pooled together. Also, we have to be careful that we don't miss any specimens which might be in the cotton itself. The sample were poured onto the petri dish. The ethanol from the sample was used to flush out the remaining specimens from the glass tube. The tube was carefully checked to make sure no specimens were left inside of the glass tube. The little paper note that comes with each kick sample was cleared of invertebrates as well and kept for further reference. All specimens that might remain on the cotton were also added into the petri dish, so that all specimens from this one sample site are put onto the petri dish for drying. We proceeded in the same manner for all the glass tubes from that sample. I am done now putting all the specimens from this one sample site onto the petri dish and I'm using a sterile pipette tip to make me some space. Now I can proceed and carefully remove the ethanol by pipetting from the specimens. I put the ethanol back into the original sample tube. When removing the ethanol you have to be of course careful to not suck up any specimens with the ethanol. Should any specimens get carried with the ethanol, just put the ethanol back into the petri dish. When almost all ethanol is removed, I tilt the petri dish a bit to remove the last drops of ethanol. Of course, we cannot remove all the ethanol, so the rest will dry overnight. I close the lid of the sampling tube and throw away the cotton balls. Next, the specimens are spread out a little bit more on the petri dish for drying and I cover them with the paper towel the petri dish is sitting on. The sample is left to dry overnight and all equipment used for this single sample is cleaned with ethanol. The time of drying is written down and all surfaces are cleaned with ethanol as well. We use new fresh gloves for each sample to prevent cross-contamination between samples. The next morning all needed equipment is cleaned again with ethanol and before we get started 
A picture is taken of the dried specimens, including the labels from each kick samples. The labels are returned to the tube of the particular sample. The dried specimens have to be transferred into a sterile tube for grinding. And the tube, of course, is labeled with the date and sample ID. To transfer the dried specimens from the petri dish into the tube, we are building a paper funnel out of printer paper and we are fixating this with two stripes of tape onto the tube. Next, 10 steel beads are added into the tube for grinding. Then the specimens are carefully scraped from the petri dish into the tube using the funnel. They are electrically charged, so it can be quite difficult to remove all of them. So we carefully remove the last bits and pieces from the petri dish using fine tweezers. Any specimens left on the paper funnel can be moved to the tube by tapping onto the paper. Of course, a little bit of dust will remain on the paper and on the petri dish, but this is just something we have to live with because it's difficult to remove every last bit of insect piece. Afterwards, the tube is closed and all of the equipment is cleaned again with ethanol for the next sample. To grind the tissue, we use an Ica Ultra Truex tube drive control system. We grind the dried specimens with an RPM of 4000 and 30 minutes in a tube with 10 steel beads. Then the tube, which now contains the finely ground tissue powder, is brought to a cleaned workspace where a spatula is used to transfer tissue from this one sample into three Eppendorf tubes for DNA salt extraction. The tube is left for a few minutes so that all the tissue powder in the tube can settle. We then take a spatula, which was cleaned before with ethanol, to take three tissue subsamples and put those into Eppendorf tubes. Those three tubes, which contain tissue from one single sample, are then used for DNA extraction. DNA from these three tubes is then pulled together, RNA digested and cleaned up. Then it can be used for DNA meta barcoding. We divide up the tissue onto the three tubes because we cannot use too much tissue for DNA extraction in a single tube. Now you know how we dried and handled those samples for drying and DNA extraction. Please refer to the references in the manuscript for details on the DNA salt extraction protocol. We thank you for watching and if you like to see more videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find a video here explaining how the Turex grinding of tissue works. See you next time. Bye bye.